So let's see what they gave us here. BE is congruent to CE, AE, DE. And you'll notice that this time the triangles are kind of like rotated. So let's label what they gave us. BE is right here. CE corresponds to that. So those are the corresponding congruent sides. AE is this one here, this longer hypotenuse. DE is going to correspond to this one right here. So off the bat, they gave us two sides. And if we want to think ahead of the game, where do these sides meet? This BE meets this AE right here. So I need this angle. I need, if I want to do SAS, I need that angle. We're going to start with our given. We note that this is a pair of sides and this is a pair of sides. So we need the included angle. Well, nothing was given to us. However, notice that these are vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. And that happens to be the included angle for this triangle and for this triangle. And so we have our side. Now we have our angle pair. And then we have our side. So we can say that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DCE because of the side angle side theorem. Now let's take a moment to pause here and reflect on what does this actually mean like in reals. So <laughs> what the SAS is allowing us to do is the following. First, recognize that every triangle has one, two, three sides and one, two, three angles. So every triangle has six parts to it. What we're saying is the following. If you give me three parts aside, the angle between the other side, then I can tell you the triangles are identical. So that's almost like saying, okay, I see two people. They have the same eyes. They have the same arms and they have the same nose. And because I know those three things, I can say they're identical twins and everything else is about them, about them is the same. That, that's what we're saying with the SAS theorem. Okay? So I don't need to see the legs. I don't need to see the toes. I don't need to see anything else. If, if, I, if I'm making the claim that if I see those three body parts, then I'm going to claim the rest, of the, the rest of them is completely the same and congruent. That's what we're saying with SAS. Show me a side and another side and the angle between the two sides and therefore the entire triangle is going to be congruent to the other entire triangle. Problem five is uh, fascinating. Um, so we're going to look at parallel lines in this one. We're going to have to reminisce a bit on what we did last semester with parallel lines. And I'm actually going to write this as a paragraph proof. I'm going to suggest to you that after we do the paragraph proof, you might want to take some time to pause and maybe rewrite the paragraph proof as a statements and reason to column proof if it helps you organize better. Let's talk about what they gave us and let's mark it on here. So AD is congruent to GB. DE is congruent to BC. And we know that DE is parallel to BC. So that means I'm going to put little arrows here because those arrows represent that these lines are parallel. And on top of that, AB is a transversal. So this thing right here is a transversal cutting these two parallel lines. Well, to help you visualize better, I'm going to go ahead and extend these lines. To kind of jog your memory a bit and remind you of what we were doing back in the day. And if it helps, let me get rid of those hypotenuses. And let's just focus on, back in the day, parallel lines cut by transversal. So we would call this a corresponding angle, and that corresponds with this one. And we did a Desmo simulation on this, so check it out if you need to again. But we know that corresponding angles are congruent. If we bring back our triangles, you see that, oh snap, they gave us the included angle. Well, they didn't give it to us. They gave it to us by giving us this hint. So they kind of gave it to us. They said, hint, these are parallel. Okay, so that's great. If, if that's the case, then these are corresponding angles and they're congruent. 
By the way, if you're given parallel lines by cut by transversal, recall that we could also use alternate interior angles are congruent and alternate exterior angles are congruent. So those will be very useful in future proofs that you might see. Okay, so let me write down the paragraph proof and then we'll chat about it. Okay, welcome to English class. It's given that AD and D, AD is congruent to GB, DE is congruent to BC. So that's a side and it's a side. So the whole purpose of this proof was to really find uh, the included angle to prove that. We ended up doing that by uh, finding the use of this given statement that DE is parallel to BC. So when we went ahead and drew those, right, and we drew that transversal further out, we were able to recognize that these were corresponding angles that fit in that spot. And we know from before that corresponding angles that are formed by parallel lines are congruent. And so we were able to prove that angle D is congruent to angle B. That gave us our angles, right? So here, here was our, our side, here was our side, and then we were able to prove our angles are congruent. And it happened to be the included angle, which is important. So then by the side angle side theorem, we were able to prove that those triangles are congruent themselves. Well, this is lovely. And you can kind of tell when a proof's gonna be a bit more quote unquote difficult when you see less and less congruent things. So if you look back at problem three, they gave us three congruent things, easy proof. You look at four, they gave us only two. So there wasn't a little step to do. And problem five that we just did only had two congruencies. So we had to pull off a third one somehow. This one in problem six, they only gave us one congruency. IF is congruent to JF. So that is a pair of sides. But what we're left doing now is we have to find another pair of sides and once we do that we have to find the included angle and we don't just get to pick what looks convenient we have to prove why we get to pick what we pick so we're going to start off with our given but what is this thing bisect what is what does it mean to bisect so we, we talked about line bisectors right those are midpoints most of the time so if, we, if we're given a midpoint then I would know that midpoint would cut a line segment in half and it would form two congruent pieces. But this is a line segment that's cutting or bisecting an angle. In this case, the angle is angle IFJ. But if it bisects it, it cuts it in half and those halves are equal congruent halves. So in other words, it would cut this angle and form this to be congruent with this. So that's angle IFH and JFH. So an angle bisector forms two congruent angles and we have this angle IFH. Notice the order again, right? If I'm going outside, top, down, IFH, then on this I'm gonna go outside, J, top, down. Follow the corresponding order. Follow that order. All right, next. Well, let's identify what we have so far. We have a pair of sides, great. We have an angle, great. I need, I need this side right here, this FH. Now this FH happens to be the same side for this triangle as it is for this triangle. And they happen to share the same length, the same side. This should remind you of problem two, part A. Do you remember the reason for that? Here's our other missing side. That was a reflexive property. And so what we have now, property, what we have now is we have a side, another side, and the included angle, side, angle, side. So we can finally say, because we have these three components that we need, we can say that triangle HIF is congruent to triangle HJF, and that is because of the SAS. Notice that all of our proofs for this set of notes for this topic ends with SAS. We know we're done with the proof when we've gotten the three components correct and we can say, boom, we're done, SAS. For your summary, so obviously leading up to SAS at the end of each proof, what are some other theorems, definitions, and properties that we've used to help develop these proofs?